Hi everyone, this is Jenny Mary and Lindsay Wickersham, and we are going to give you some ways of collecting formative data during the lesson. These ideas can be used in all grade levels and across content areas. In this lesson, we are going to review the definition of formative data. We're going to discuss ideas for collecting data during the lesson and then what to do with the data collected. Formative assessments are informal ways of collecting data that you will use to inform your instruction and planning. Etopia explains formative assessments as a way to discover what students know while they were, they're still in the process of learning it. This can be tricky for most teachers because designing just the right assessment can feel high stakes for the teachers. Um, this is because using it to figure out what comes, uh, sorry, because we are trying to figure out what comes next. Are we ready to move on? Do our students need a different path into the concepts? Or most likely, which students are ready to move on and which need a different path? There are multiple times to collect formative data. So you can collect it before the lesson, after the lesson or during the lesson, depending on what kind of data you're looking for. Some ideas before the lesson to collect some data to figure out what your students know or are lacking. You could do a KWL chart or a KQLQA chart. And if you don't know what the KQLQA chart is, if you Google that, um, you can get some samples. You could do a quick write to figure out what students know before you dive into a lesson. You could do entry tickets or some type of a poll. During the lesson, if you want to know how they're um, under, if they're understanding the learning target, how they're showing their knowledge of the content area, you can take observational notes. You can use participation cards or do a student voting activity, or, or you can collect data by listening to group discussions. After the lesson is over, exit tickets, a poll, you could do a quick write, or you can have students complete the um, yeah, sentence frame I used to think and now I think to show you their level of knowledge. All right, we're going to focus on collecting data during the lesson. One way to do this is by using observational notes to collect formative data. This can be as easy as taking a sticky note and taking notes on that sticky note. If you have your learning target or lesson objective in mind, you have already planned out what you want your students to be able to do by the end of the lesson. So think about what your look for is for independent practice. Um, as students are practicing the skill, walk around with a sticky note and take notes on what you notice your students doing. Are some of them totally getting it? Are some of them close to getting it? Are some way off? These notes can help you decide your next steps. And we're gonna talk about the next steps later on in the presentation. Another way to collect data during a lesson is to have students assess their own learning. This can be done in several ways, thumbs up, thumbs down, levels of understanding or participation cards. Here's a short video introducing participation cards. So at this point, we're gonna share our responses. Remember to use your participation cards. So participation cards are a set of index cards which have labels on them. I agree, I disagree, or I don't know how to respond. We use them to assess students' understanding, but we also use them to give students voice. So I first pose a question. What was the summary of this excerpt? The summary of these two pages is that Mrs. Wise is setting Jasmine up to fail. Scholars will listen to the responses and then they will use their participation cards. I respectfully disagree with you. What can the reader infer about Ms. Wise based on paragraph two? We obviously cannot have 24 scholars speaking at the same time, but we want everyone to feel their ideas matter. Even if I am very shy and I don't feel comfortable, my voice was still heard. Love that. Um, as you can see, the teacher in the video was walking around with a clipboard. I'm not sure what she had on her clipboard, but I liked to make things easier on myself by using my seating chart. So you can see a picture here. Um, what I would do is I would walk around and I would circle students' names um, who assess themselves on the lower end. These students are telling me that they don't get it and that they need additional help. I would then use the seating chart to plan my next steps.
an idea for collecting data during the lesson, uh, particularly speaking about partic uh, about discussions or student discourse, um, you're first going to want to start with your learning target in mind. So what is it that you're hoping students learned or are learning and you want to check in for their understanding? The second thing, what are you looking for? Are you looking for the level of participation from all group members? Are you looking for key words that the students say? So you have to have your look for and keep it simplified so you have um, you can access many students. And then the third thing, you're going to record the data while the students are practicing it. So essentially, how are you going to record if they're doing it? One example to use for your look for while students are working in a group or having some type of discourse with each other um, is this rubric. So for example, say you're working on student collaboration and the subject of the war and your focus for this week is getting students to participate you want all members of every group to be participating with their ideas you could walk around the room and listen to conversation over the course of two or three class periods or time periods during the week and jot down the group numbers or student names under the under the corresponding rubric score score so for example in this i was just looking at participation even though this is a five point rubric so here's an example of that so i was focusing on participation and I walked around and noted over the course of several days which group members were participating and at the level. So this is going to tell me that my group number five, I have my lead, my go-getter student who took control. So I can have them maybe practice again. I, this is an opportunity for me to reteach. Or um, maybe we need to watch group three or four have some type of a specific group conversation and other students learn from that way. Okay, so now that you have a couple ideas of how to collect formative assessment, um, formative data, take formative data while you are teaching, before you are teaching or after, what do you do with that data? So sometimes when you get that data, you are going to say like, great, my students get it. Almost all my students get it. I have a couple that I can talk to. But other times it's going to be the opposite and you need to inter intervene in some way. So an example of that, pull small groups. Maybe you're going to pull small groups and you're going to focus on adding two digit numbers with regrouping and you have five or six kids that need that support. Um, on the spot feedback, an example, you have a respectful conversation about um, providing a hook in writing. And that respectful conversation is going to be maybe you're standing next to the student or you say, so-and-so, can you come see me real quick? I want to talk to you about something. And so they don't feel embarrassed about what they know or don't know. Um, you can reteach the whole class. So if you give an exit ticket or you're noticing that none of your students are participating, you can stop instruction and reteach that portion. So I gave the example a lot of students are missing capitals in their sentences. With this data, you can review the next day if you're thinking, well, a lot of my students get it, but not everyone. So I need them to do a quick warm up or review on when we use quotation marks before we move on to the next learning. And then the most important thing about formative assessment is that it is used to inform your instruction. So it's gonna help you plan your instruction. So if you figure out that so many students are still not understanding regrouping in math, for example, what am I going to do as the teacher to change my lessons? And I need to talk to my partner teachers, look for things online, reach out to people to find out how I can better plan my instruction to reach more students. So here's some ideas on what you can do with the data you collected. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Um, please let us know if you have any questions. We are always here to help you.